Then I had the privilege of meeting a fighter by the name of Randy Couture. Okay, and watching him and, and experiencing his ability to manhandle and control an opponent at that clinch range or trapping range using technique and not just size, strength, and attributes made a light bulb go, go off in my head because this is what we're missing, the ability to control an opponent, use a control tie-up, and have dominant position inside that trapping or clinch range. If you don't understand control tie-ups and what that is at clinch range, you're going to be as helpless at that range as you would be on the ground if you didn't know what the guard or mount positions were. That's one of the things I liked about straight blast is it didn't have the traditional martial arts hierarchy where you know the sensei was kind of up on a pedestal and he never really worked out with his students. He was just kind of the mentor that gave little bits of information and showed little bits of technique. Uh, I think Matt is one of the few guys that is still going through a constant learning process himself and I think uh, our relationship, mine and Matt's relationship, is a real good example of that. He's really become interested in Greco and the pummeling and the, the close-in clinching and, and feels that could be a missing factor in their, in their program at Straight Blast and help them make that transition from up, standing up fighting to the ground fighting. And, and he's been willing to open his mind and uh, try and learn some of the things that we do as Greco wrestlers and at the same token, I, I came in with an open mind wanting to learn submission and wanting to learn how to box and, and defend kicks and, and do a lot of that stuff. And so it's been a real even exchange of information, and uh, it's been real good for me and I think good for Matt. And I think that's a difference. A lot of traditional martial artists, they kind of have a closed mind. They think their system is best. There's, you know, there's no, nothing any of the other systems can offer that are going to help them out that much. And, and uh, this cross-training, this this kind of exchange of information, I think, is going to make us all better fighters. Now, in keeping with the tradition of simplifying that we have at the Straight Blast Gym, we've taken a, a series of literally dozens of energy drills that we used to use and distilled them down into one major drill or game, and that's the pummel. And that's what we're going to go over and cover today. Now, the pummel is a key aspect of that trapping or clinch range, and there's three key areas that we need to work for that clinch range. These are the three areas. Now, the first key area is control tie-up. Think of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Anybody that knows about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu knows that position first is the basic rule. When you're wrestling around on the ground, especially if your opponent is bigger than you, if you try and go for a submission or you try and go crazy with strikes, you don't have position. You're going to lose it. Everything comes from dominating position. Well, in the clinch, the distance between you and your opponent is very similar, so it only makes sense that that same principle would apply. And that's why at the gym we always stress controlling the tie-up making sure you're the one that's in charge of that clinch when it comes to this range. The second area is striking. That's also a very important area. You have basically two kinds of strikes. You have attached striking and unattached. Now, all I mean by that is attached striking means you're holding on to them, you're attached to them in some way as you're striking, which is the most common thing that's going to happen. You're going to be involved in a clinch through a knee or an elbow while that pummel is going on. But there's also unattached striking, which means you're not holding on to them when you're hitting. And the third aspect is takedowns and throws. And you need to know those. Even if you're not interested in taking your opponent down to the mat, you say, I don't want to take my opponent to the mat. I just want to fight on my feet. Great. The best way to make sure you're going to be able to fight on your feet is to know takedowns and throws. The best way to make sure you're going to wind up on the ground, don't know jack about takedowns. Don't know anything about a double leg. Don't worry about what an underhook is. And then I can guarantee you, you're going to be the easiest person in the world to take down. So if you want to have a really good clinch game, we want to make sure we have all three areas. We want to have a control tie-up, we want to know how to strike, and we want to have takedowns and throws. Okay, now if you're saying, hey man,